Ms. Cheng Li Hui. Mr. Speaker, today I would like to raise the uncomfortable topic of rape, how it psychologically affects its victims, and what we can do to provide aid and restoration to the victims. In November 2017, the Straits Times reported a burglary rape case that the High Court, High Court passed sentence over. In the case, a man broke into a house with the intention to burgle. When he saw the young victim in deep sleep alone in her bedroom, he decided to rape her and physically assaulted her by raining blows on her to beat her into submission and stop her resistance. Following the traumatic ordeal, the High Court heard that the victim had become so fearful of people budging into her room that she now sleeps with the lights on and keeps a pair of scissors on her bedside. The victim has been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Following the breakup of her engagement due to the ordeal, she has thoughts that she is unworthy of others. She also blames herself for not sleeping in her grandmother's bedroom that night, thinking that she would not have been raped had she not slept alone that night. In the sentencing of the case, Justice Chan Sing Ong told the perpetrator that words cannot fully express how much pain and suffering he had inflicted on the victim. You have wrecked her life, said the High Court judge. Sir, the bill in discussion today will provide additional measures to support rape victims. I support and welcome the additions to the range of safeguards that currently exist. Specifically, the disclosure of the victim's identity and having to recount a traumatic experience in the presence of general public may not only be embarrassing but traumatising and may undermine the, the individual's recovery process. With the amendments, victims can be assured that their identities will be protected. In addition, they will be able to give their evidence in closed-door hearing. The bill will also allow for the use of screen that will prevent victims from having to see their attackers. In some cases, the mere sight of one's attackers may deter the victim from testifying and cause more psychological trauma to the victims. This can compromise the victim's ability to give their evidence in court. The Evidence Amendment Bill will allow the Minister to introduce rules about the type of questions that may be asked of the victim in court. Ministry of Law has announced that under these rules, the court's permission will be required before the victim can be asked questions about their sexual history that do not relate to the charge. This will help debunk the myth that the victim's dressing or behaviour somehow suggests that they consented to sex or that their report of sexual offence should not be believed. Legal counsels who abuse the position by posing insensitive questions which do not have any relevance to the case have been reprimanded by wise judges in the past, and I'm therefore particularly heartened by the Evidence Amendment Bill. I remember reading about such a case recently. A lawyer was read by a district judge where he suggested that it might have been the molest victim's dressing which increased the tendency for people to commit the sexual offence against her. In other words, it was her fault that she was molested. The judge had then said that the lawyer's conduct had been completely unacceptable and fell short of expectations of lawyers. He also noted that such questions are forbidden in the court under the Evidence Act and also proscribed under the legal profession rules. The Evidence Amendment Bill will therefore provide another layer of safeguards against hurting victims in court. This is a significant amendment and it is often the thought of going to court and facing the defence counsel cross-examination that is most daunting to the victims. Mr Speaker, I am encouraged that the investigative processes have also been improved to ensure that a victim is treated appropriately and sensitively from the time he or she reports the offence. Firstly, with the one-stop abu one abuse forensic examination, one safe facility, Victims, report, victims reporting an alleged rape to the police will no longer have to face more stress and scrutiny of being taken to a public hospital for medical examination. Instead, the examination of the victim is done in a private setting away from the public eye. Secondly, investigators will be trained to speak to victims in an empathetic way to approach the issues from their perspective. This will help the victims recount their ordeal without causing more hurt and trauma. Speaker, sir, I applaud the proposed amendments made to the bill. They are humane, compassionate and reflect a society that not only looks after but is also respectful of the vulnerable members within. Let us try and help the victims recover from their pain and move on with their lives. Thank you.